Hi everyone, I'm John Willis and I'm an expert in Grass Valley's K-Frame systems. What we're going to do first of all today is look at how we check the systems out, work out what sources are which, put them on buttons and make sure they've got the right names. So let's get going. This is the very familiar Grass Valley K-Frame menu. What I'm looking at here is the engineering status menu. And why I'm doing that is to look at the numbers and names inside the uh, display. The first part of the display I want to look at is this one here. Are all the letters white? In other words, do all the pieces of the mixer have the same software? When I first sit in front of a mixer, the first thing I look at is the install options menu. This menu lets you know exactly what the mixer is licensed to use. So you can see this one is, is a simulator. It's very heavily licensed. The total licensed and enabled columns are the ones to look at and the list of the descriptions of the options at the left hand side here. You can see this one's really, really loaded. It's got eight full MEs, the controller mix effects bank, four channels of Clipstore. Clipstore is a server, you may remember it's the Grass Valley Summit. And the big gotcha here is if you've got a two channel summit, it won't run correctly if the mixer is licensed for four channels. And if you've got a, a two channel license and a four channel summit, it will also not work correctly. Something to throw back to the engineers pretty quickly if you see this. You can read the rest yourself and just be sure that you've got what you need before you start making the show. The next thing to check out in my view is source definition. What you're looking for here is to make sure that there's nothing too surprising inside this source list. I wouldn't change things. I question the engineering team. But one of the things I look at very often is engineering ID is the database number of the source. And over the right hand side here, you can see that engineering ID is using video input one and so on down the list of sources. You can see that they're all going down into sequential numbers. If you find a source, for instance, I'm going to touch ID 5, and all of a sudden you see input number 85 or something like that on it, that's probably a problem. And I would ask the engineering team why they've done that. It may be a complete mistake, but something to check for. Engineering names are set here, and I don't really worry too much about whether they say 1 to 5, 1 to 30, or they say CAM 1 to 20 or whatever, because all of this is for the engineers to play with, not me. I'd also check my character generators. You can see my input 31 is a character generator. And down here in key mode, it's been told that it's using a linear key input. So instead of having just the first two inputs set, it grows another one, which is the key input for that character generator. The shaped video thing, I would generally say, anything that's an anti-aliased video should have that shaped video button pressed. Okay, so I'm fairly happy I've got my sources set up correctly. What I'd now like to do is go to user setups, panel preferences, button mapping tab, and here you are. You've got the list of buttons from left to right and the list of sources applied to them. Well, you can see that some of this is just really not what you'd expect. So on the first layer, which is the top layer of buttons you can see, I've got inputs one to 10 visible right now. And this is how you assign them. If I did want to put, for instance, camera 23, maybe a, a super slow or something like that in amongst my cameras, I could just roll down, find that camera and assign the camera as required. So this is the KSP, the soft panel for the K-Frame. And as you can see, it looks quite a lot like one mix effects bank of a, a fairly simple switcher. So what we just did was we were in source definition. We put a, um, a, a camera 23 on the control panel. You can see it on button four. There it is. And I've got some randomly num numeric names down here that may or may not help me. So how do we change those names to make life easier for ourselves? It's a great temptation to use the engineering setup menu, but I wouldn't do that. I would use sweet preference source patch. And inside here, I can change the name of any of the uh, sources by using these three columns, panel name, OLED name, and menu name. 
For the KSP, which only has panel names, this is the one to use. So you can see that I've got a, a source called on button one, C1. And, and you know how often uh, we, we use the name camera one when we're getting things called. Cool. It probably just needs to be one. Now I've got cameras named one, two, three, 23, five, six, seven, eight. If 23 is actually, I mean, I don't know, I'm gonna guess it's gonna be something like a super slow-mo or something like that, something that very rarely gets to air, but it's a reverse angle or something like that. It could be useful just to name it. And right down here, why don't I just call it that? Um, and I can see now it is the super slow-mo camera in amongst my other cameras. So what I've got now is everything laid out as I'd like it to be. I've given things names as I'd like them to be and the buttons are laid out correctly. Before I go any further, why don't I just save things? So really quickly, into file operations, I'm using remote storage. In other words, a disk which is not part of the main frame. And you can see up here, the menu is a good place to save things, I think anyway. And here we are, K-Frame user. What I would do is create a folder for my show give it a, you know, a more descriptive name than show A, but that's something to remind me that it's my show. When you open that by double clicking it, I'm gonna create a show. You can push create all day, it's just gonna say, give me a name. So that's what we'll do. And I'll give it something, a, 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 um, a representative name that will remind me what it is so that I can find it again next time. Over here in the right hand side, you can see that the create show dialog is up. It's gonna save everything that I've done so far, including what was in the mixer already. Don't worry about that. All I'm really after are my source definitions. But if you don't store something and want it later, you will be upset. I'll hit create and there it goes. It's creating the show. And there we have it. My show has been saved. I'm in a good position to say, I can now start programming my show. I'll just go back to the status menu and I think we're done. So what we just did there was everything we said. We checked that the mix had the required elements to be able to make the show. We checked our input sources. We assigned sources to buttons. We renamed any sources we wanted to using source patch inside the user setups menu. And we saved a show just to get things going inside a nice new directory so we can find things again. That's a great way to be ready to start the show.